couple of days ago, I uh, went to prayer, and um, I'd had a thought in my heart <clears throat> to preach on, and uh, generally a lot of times when God gives me a message, it's over a few days, and every day in prayer, or reading my Bible, God will begin to add to that. And as soon as I walked into prayer, I felt a righteous anger of God come down on me. And I mean, I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I felt such an authority of the Lord begin to rise up in me. Years ago, the Lord uh, dropped this in my spirit. You've heard me say this. But God said, every spirit that's in the earth had to come through the church to get there. Because the church is the gate of the world. You can't, you can't get in the earth without going through the church. And so that brings us to what, we've, what we're dealing with over the last, especially two or three years, is gender identity. This confusion that people don't know whether they're a man or woman. They're, they're, they're confused as who they are. But I felt in my spirit that the reason that there is such an identity crisis in the natural realm with human beings on who they are is because there is a gender crisis in the spirit realm with believers that don't know who they are in Christ. Hallelujah. They are confused about who they are in the Holy Ghost. And because of that, we as believers many, many times walk so beneath our privileges. We talk mystically of our inheritance, and we talk mystically and with a forlong hunger of things that the Bible says are our portion. Subjectively, we call them ours, but experientially, we don't walk in them. This is not an indictment, but if I had you raise your hand today, how many are on medication right now in this building? Half of you would raise your hand because there is an attack of sickness and demon spirits that have come against the body of Christ. Christians should live different than sinners. Hallelujah. You should walk in a level of authority that the unbeliever does not walk in. We should not have to con contest the enemy every moment of the day just to have some semblance of quality of life. But you can't deal with something if you don't know who you are. We understand more about what demons are than we do about who Jesus is. And yet, one of the, I don't think there's a greater, more powerful verse in the Bible than 1 John 4, 17. As... Jesus is, so are we in this present world. So then you have to go back and begin to do a synopsis of the life of Jesus Christ. Never once did Jesus lose. There is no instance where disciples had to gather around Jesus because he had the flu. There were no meetings canceled because Jesus was too sick to get there. There were no recorded instances in the New Testament where Jesus looked at a demon and said, you will come out. And the demon said, sorry, I ain't leaving. And Jesus walked away confused. 
He knew who he was. Jesus did not operate in the deity of God. He operated in the nature of God. There's a big difference. Even the New Old Testament in Psalms, it says ye are gods. It's not saying we are deity. It is saying that we operate in the nature of who God is. So as Jesus is right now, so are you and I in this world. That means that there is not a devil in hell that's in the earth that has the God-given authority that when you say, I've had enough of you, you will leave and I am evicting you from my life that that spirit has the right to say I ain't leaving so I declare in the name of the Lord I lose a holy God given authority in the spirit of the Lord in this building some of you need to get a revelation that as Jesus is I am not evolving if any man be in Christ he is a new creation that's not a process. There's nowhere in the New Testament or in Acts or the epistles that says you don't get any authority until you've served the Lord 10 years. Yeah, we are harassed on every side. Spirits that want to come into our lives and deteriorate the quality of who you and I are. With Jesus, he heard the cry of the men of Gadara. I wonder what's wrong with the hearing of the church. that we can walk through malls and public places and men and women are screaming in torment in the spirit realm and we don't hear it and yet Jesus could be across a sea and off in the ethereal distance he could hear this man crying his disciples didn't hear it. He said, guys, I got to get to the other side. Hallelujah. There is somewhere that God is taking me and you. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We are on a journey. Yes, hallelujah. We are on a journey. Yes. My, my ministry vision has been Pastor Harry and Sam will tell you this. We've sat, we sat in our home with Pastor Steve and Cozy Dixon, what, maybe 25 years ago? At least 25 years ago. And we sat around a table and we articulated what we wanted our ministry, what our vision was for our life. And I've always felt I said, my vision is to hold crusades in this nation and around the world, not just for Christians, but to create an atmosphere, hallelujah, where thousands of unbelievers, do you feel there's a chill of the spirit in the atmosphere right now? Hallelujah. What you're looking at, this is just a foundation of what God's getting ready to do. And, and 23 has been such a year of opposition, says the Lord. And it's been a year of sowing. But God said when the clock strikes midnight and 2024 comes into existence, he says, you're emptying your seeds out of your bag. And God said, I am opening the barn doors and no longer will you plant, but you're going to begin to reap. And the time 
of crying is coming to an end, says the Lord, and there is going to be laughter in the house of God. For even as a woman in great travail has such pain, when she brings that child into deliverance, says the Lord, she forgets the pain that she was there for the joy of holding that baby in her arms. Many of you that have been so bereft of harvest and joy and laughter, hallelujah, I feel a release in the heavens. And God said the clouds are pregnant. I'm, I'm prophesying something in the spirit. There is a pregnant storm of the Holy Ghost that's getting ready to break forth. And we're going to call it the latter rain and the early rain together. No wonder hell's come after us. No wonder the enemy says so in the town. No wonder the devil says quit and go home. No, sir. We're on the edge of the greatest release of the outpouring of the power of God that mankind has ever seen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will have a crusade in Madison Square Gardens. It doesn't take any more anointing to go from resting place to this than it does to go from this to there. But see, we have to get a revelation of who we are in the Spirit. When Jesus left, he did not take a suitcase with him. and pack up his anointing, his authority, and his ministry. He went through TSA empty-handed. He didn't declare anything except greater is he that's going to be in them than he that is already in the world. He left everything behind because he was given it to you and I. He was leaving it because he realized they're going to need what I have for them to be able to do what I have done. This is why the Lord says, and see, we, we glaze over these scriptures and we have become numb to them. And they're just little cliches that we quote every once in a while on a good day. But he did say this, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you or harm you because you have authority. Rusty, come here in the name of the Lord. I, my heart has been since you text me in the name of Jesus. We're going to put this thing to an end right now. In the name of the Lord, this trespassing demonic spirit that has tried to come into your body and lied to you and says, I'm defining you and your last days are going to be days of turmoil and sorrow not so says the Lord I command this spirit hallelujah this onset of this evil demon spirit you come out of his body in the name of the Lord and I come go on hallelujah from this day on no more tremors no more shakes no more symptoms no more signs that when you go back the doctor will confirm that you are 100% healed in the name of the Lord. Now, that is our right. Hallelujah. Over everyone in this building, in the name of the Lord, I decree, I command as your pastor, every demon spirit in this building, I command you the name of the Lord. You are going to get up and march out of this place by the power of God because we have authority over you and nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you or harm you in the spirit of God. God. 
we're going to make demons cry. I'm tired of demon spirits making God's people cry. In the spirit of heaviness. And, you know, we've gotten so refined in the church that, you know, we've allowed political correctness to get in the church. My daughter, I was mentioning um, about, I said, oriental people. She said, well, you can't say that anymore. I said, well, aren't they from the Orient? She said, yeah, but that's not politically correct. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with that? We've made so many things. That's not a disparaging remark. It's not said, it's not done out of uh, <clears throat> being uh, racist or anything. We got, when I was a boy, <clears throat> gay meant you were happy. <clears throat> and then the enemy, see, the enemy likes to come in and take what's right and pervert it. But we let that spirit get in the church till we became vanilla. Oh, we don't say demons. We just say they're trouble. It's just, it, it, it's, it's a weakness. No, it's a demon. Call it what it is. Jesus shows up <clears throat> at the graveyard, and here comes this man that has at least 6,000 demons in him. And so I'm going to stop at this story because I need to, to touch something else. The Bible says that the heavens belong to God, but and it also says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But it also says, I think in Psalms 115, that <clears throat> God has entrusted, that's one of its meanings, the earth to the sons of men. So he took the earth in its beautiful, pristine condition. And he said, I'm giving it to you. I'm entrusting you with it. There's lots of debate about where demons came from. Anybody ever wonder about where demons come from? And, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> there's some people take their theological stance from the Book of Enoch. Uh, I'm sure that Book of Enoch is an interesting book, but it's not the Scripture. And you can't add it to the Bible. You know, I, I hear people say, well, King James didn't have a full understanding of how to interpret the Scripture. Well, it's a very divine fact that God takes a heathen king and puts in his heart to translate the Bible into English language. All right? So, it's like saying, well, you know, God really didn't have enough control. He put enough clarity in the Bible for us to live a victorious life. If he wanted more in there, he'd have put more in there. If he wanted less in there, he'd have put less in there. So I'm not one of those that wants to say, well, there's certain chapters and revelations that really shouldn't be in there. That's a dangerous thing. I believe every single word of every single chapter of every single verse, hallelujah, in the entire Bible, I believe that all Scripture has been given by the inspiration of God, and I stand on the validity and the authenticity of the written canons of the Scripture that God wrote it, hallelujah. So I'll let God explain in eternity what he wants to explain. <clears throat> But my personal viewpoint, and don't be writing any letters on this, <laughs> is that demon spirits are not angels. They're not fallen angels. Angels, even though they're fallen, they have bodies. 
And we know this because the Bible said that they can look like men, they function like men, and that angels came down and had sexual relationship with natural women and produced the Nephilims and the Anakims and the giants and all of that. So angels have physical bodies. There are angels, there are seraphims, there are cherubims, there are demons. Demons, I think, are disembodied spirits from a pre-Adamic race that fell, that had the curse of God on them, and they have no physical body. Demon spirits, nobody is possessed by an angel. They are possessed by a demon spirit. And I've had enough experience with deliverance and casting demons out of people that I, I do know it's a real world. I've seen some of the most bizarre things, and you don't go in there trying to look for bizarre things. But I can tell you what, you can, you can, demons can manifest, in a, and, and the less authority you have, the more they will manifest. My personal <clears throat> approach to deliverance is, as soon as a demon wants to begin to talk, I tell him, shut up. I want to hear anything you got to say. You're just coming out, and you're gone in the name of the Lord. We're not going to debate. You're not going to have five minutes to tell me your thing. Another thing is, demons cry when they get in trouble. And when Jesus approached the demoniac of Gadara, we don't know. One, one story says there were two. One says there's one. It could be different instances, or maybe we're just referencing one in this particular chapter. But the Bible said <clears throat> that when the demoniac saw Jesus, he ran to Jesus, and the spirits began to speak out of him that said, I know who you are, thou son of God. Torment me not. We have gone too long in the church without tormenting the demonic realm that rules over this nation. Hallelujah. And so what we have is we have this gender identity confusion that we don't want to make the devil mad. But I can tell you this, if Jesus could walk into hell with just a little bit of blood, no angels and no army, turn it upside down, look at the devil and say, give me the keys to death and to hell, walk back out of there intact. You and I, as he is, so are we in this world. And we can walk into the demonic realm of hell and look at them and say, I have come to take my children. I've come to take my health. I've come to take my prosperity. I've come to take my ministry. And there's not one single thing that you can do about it. There is this sympathy that has gotten loose in the earth and in the church that we need to feel sorry for the enemy. I want to tell you right now, the devil's never getting saved. He is going to burn in a lake of fire, and it is my personal objective and agenda to make life as hellish as I can make it for him while I am living and breathing because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He can not touch you. He cannot touch me, for I have an angel standing around about me. Psalm 91 said, whatever you bind, we bind. Whatever he loses, we loose in the name of the Lord. Some of you need to walk back through your house with a holy unction and authority in God and say, I'm tired of being pushed around, mealy-mouthed and intimidated and tormented, but today one of us is leaving and it ain't me. I will get back to Gadara. So Jesus just looks at him and said, you're leaving. And you got to remember, he did this to 6,000 demons. Well, actually more than that, because he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legions, plural. And one legion was 6,000. So we know Jesus, in one moment, 
kicked out 12,000 demons minimum out. See, demons can't do anything until they get a physical body. They are disembodied spirits that need a human being to get inside of in order to carry out their personal desires. And see, the modern church is, we want to be politically correct. We don't want to get too loud. We don't want to get, you know, too... I promise you, as long as I'm pastor of this church, we will never lead our worship with a guitar. It might work for other churches, but we're not going to strum and be a guitar-led church with just a medium tempo and sing... Our God is an awesome God. Listen, when you come to church, you need to feel something. Hallelujah. There needs to be joy in the house. There needs to be a release and an exuberance in the things of the Lord. There needs to be an abounding of your release in response to the Spirit of God. And so... What we have is Jesus evicts all of these demon spirits in a moment, and he casts them out. The Bible said they cried out. I want to make demons cry for all the times they've made me cry. How many of you would like to see reciprocated back on the enemy? <clears throat> One of the problems we have, though, is because we don't know who we are. When we have issues that deal with the demonic, we want Jesus to do it. He ain't here. The Bible says that he is sitting in Ephesians on the right hand of the Father. If you're waiting for Jesus to do it, you're going to be waiting till the rapture. He is not here. His nature's here. His anointing's here. His authority is here. But physically, Jesus is not in the earth. So we are asking Jesus to do something that he's already done. This is why he said, greater works than these shall ye do. Anytime, you know, you, you have people come and they want you to pray with them. And you say, what's wrong? I'm just overwhelmed. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And their problem is real. But unless somebody else that has authority can step in as a surrogate Christian, they're not going to make it. <clears throat> because as long as you are intimidated... By the, inst by the thing that is coming against you, you've already lost. You have to approach it with the mindset, I'm not going into the ring to fight. I'm going into the ring to knock him out and drag him out by the power of the Lord. The Holy Ghost is a one-punch wonder. Hallelujah. One moment the enemy's there and a right cross by the Spirit of God, and down he goes for the count. I declare to you in the name of the Lord, America is is getting ready to see a remnant of men and women that are not milk fed, that are not mealy mouthed, that are not wondering if we can, will it happen, but they know their God. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Oh, the Holy Ghost right now, there's something being released in the heavenlies over the sound of my voice. And God is saying, I've given you a revelation. You look like me. You talk like me. You pray like me. You look just like your father. Why? Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We've tolerated stuff way too long.
you go back to Judges, the first chapter, it begins to give you a narrative of all of these different tribes that had possessed their inheritance. And yet it will say, <clears throat> but the Canaanites were still in the land because they had not been able to drive them all out. And so <clears throat> they brought them into forced, the, the Israelites brought their enemy into forced labor. We know in Joshua with the Gibeonites because they had made a treaty with them, which they should not have. And when they found out who they were, they said, we can't kill you, but we're going to make you hewers of wood. We'll make you wood splitters, and we're going to make you water carriers. <clears throat> So, I don't know what forced labor entailed, but if you could have walked into their environment, you would have saw all of these tribes that God had spoken prophetically to them and said, I will go before you. I will send an angel even before you, and they will drive out the enemy. And yet now, <clears throat> you have all of these Israelites, these different tribes that are going about their daily business, and everywhere they look, there's their enemy that's living with them, drinking the same water, eating from the same fields, just harassing. The enemy didn't have enough power <clears throat> to, to destroy them and take back their land. But Israel didn't have enough authority to eradicate them. So Israel has to learn how to cohabitate with an enemy that scripturally they should have, have the authority to get rid of. But subjectively they cannot. And theologians believe it's directly related to the fact that Israel had already fallen into some of the practices of heathen worship that their enemies practiced. And this is not to embarrass you because uh, <clears throat> my blood pressure is basically normal. In fact, the last time I had it checked, um, the number that's been so high, it was high as 110. I think it's the uh, dystolic number. It's the, the lower one. The last time I had checked it, it was 71. <clears throat> I went for months, and I would go in, and that thing would still be high. And it would just wear on me. I mean... Uh, through my diet, I was doing everything right. I was, the only thing I was not doing was taking uh, <clears throat> prescription medication because I felt so strongly for me personally that I will not be able to see God use me to pray for the sick if there is a spirit that rules over my body. And I felt by the spirit of God that I had to break through this thing and break it in the name of the Lord. And so I just kept declaring. I finally said, if I die of high blood pressure, then so be it. But I will not take high blood pressure medicine. Now, this is not <clears throat> to reprimand you. If you're taking it, um, please, until the Holy Ghost speaks to you personally. I'm just saying this is how God was speaking to me personally. That <clears throat> I, needed, I needed to. But if... <clears throat> You will never rise higher generally than the person who leads you. This is why you need a pastor that's godly, Holy Ghost filled, <clears throat> that lives the life. You should never have to stoop to get underneath your covering. I never will get this. All these people that go to these churches that are dead and their pastors had all kinds of issues and they're still going there. Get out of that church. 
You don't have a lot of time left. Find a church, hallelujah, that has the move of the Holy Ghost. Doesn't have to be this style, but at least find a church, hallelujah, where the headship is righteous and anointed and puts value on the presence of the Lord. And so, Israel learns how to cohabitate with their enemy because they can't drive them out. This is what's wrong with too many believers in the church is we shifted from trying to get them out into how to live peacefully with the spirits that are in our life. I will not live with a demon spirit in my life. <clears throat> we will not allow demon spirits to be in our church. Hallelujah. You say, well, you're radical. You're out of the box. So may, I may be out of the box, but I ain't out of the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is scriptural. And the Bible says this. Give no place to the devil. And you got all of these spirits. Listen, you know why disembodied spirits were running everywhere? It's because they didn't have anybody to possess. And then all of a sudden, hell got emptied out in the last 10 years or so in the earth. And the humanities went crazy. And now as believers, we're trying to cohabitate with sickness and medicine and depression and divorce and addictions and alcohol. And we're saying we just want to make it in bed. Listen, I ain't just making it into heaven. Hallelujah. They better open the gate before I'm a mile off because I'm hitting it in a full run and a full sprint in the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament, they said, somebody's coming. They said, who is it? He said, it looks like Jehu, for he driveth furiously. I want heaven to say, that looks like Kent Christmas because he is a radical man. I want you to be right alongside side of me. Is there anybody in this house that can get a revelation of the Holy Ghost that today is the day that we say no more? How long before we get fed up? How many more people do we have to bury of cancer before the church starts operating in divine healing in cancer? How many more young people have to OD before we get an authority over addiction? How many more pastors have to fall over pornography before there's a ministry, hallelujah, that can bring them in private and cast that spirit out and say, get back in the pulpit and preach thus saith the Lord. Still going to come back to Gadara. But I wanted to bring one other thought to you. Because I've had it with the devil. I've had it with his involvement in our building. I've had it with his involvement in our political system. <clears throat> I refuse to go four more years after this election. Go on, I can't believe it happened again. So this time, I am praying a preemptive prayer. Now, I'm not setting off any algorithms. I'm not naming any names. I'm just saying, but you can't hear me when I pray. YouTube cannot hear me when I pray. Facebook can't hear me. I'm verbalizing it. So I can say anything I want, and you can't do anything about it because you don't know what I'm saying. So I'll just be smarter than you, and I won't say it from the pulpit anymore because we're not going to get kicked off anymore because the gospel needs to be preached to all nations. Apostle Paul is preaching the gospel, and everywhere he goes... There's this girl 
that is demon possessed that is harassing him. You know, and what she's saying sounds pretty good. These men are servants of the Most High God, and they do show us the way into salvation. But the enemy, it was a mocking. It was a taunting. We are being taunted by the enemy. The Arababa Sunday. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Two days ago when I began to get this in my spirit, I could just, I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. I, I could hear thoughts coming to me. I, and I hadn't taken my phone that day. And I thought, my God, I hope I can remember all this stuff that God's putting in me. Because I'm praying in tongues the whole time. Because there's something happening in the Holy Ghost. There is this <clears throat> just had enough. Everywhere Paul's going, he's preaching, he's praying for people, and every time he turns around, these men are the servants of the Most High God, and they just show us the way of salvation. <laughs> Don't grieve men and women that are full of the Holy Ghost. It's not healthy. The Bible said <clears throat> she did that one too many times. The Bible says she grieved his spirit. She started that mess. He looked at her and said, shut up. In the name of Jesus, I command you, you foul demon, you come out of her. <clears throat> there wasn't, it didn't say, and the girl fell down and tore herself and vomited and foamed at the mouth and jumped back up and ran away naked and then come back and attacked Paul. And Paul hollered, get me some apostles because this is going to be a hard one. <clears throat> well, I know I'm not a typical preacher, but I'm just probably interpreting, you know, how a lot of times we think of that stuff. When I was raised, you know, and people cast out demos, it's get your kids out of the room because that spirit will come out. Those kids are going to jump on them. And, you know, these things start manifesting. And actually, people want to be entertained by them. Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing the enemy has that entertains me. He just looked at her and said, that is enough. Be silent. And come out. Just like that that spirit became disembodied again. This is something that I believe is getting ready to happen. I, I mentioned here recently on this message that probably over the last several years, it's like hell has emptied out of demons. I mean, they're, they're everywhere in the earth. It, it's incredible. None of us ever thought that in our rational minds, we would see the degree of right being wrong and wrong being right. It's because every demon spirit seems like that exists has been loosed in the atmosphere and has found people to possess. When people get possessed, they get bold. And they don't have shame. And our society is a demon-possessed society. Now, that's going to go on a caption. When you hit YouTube, Pastor Kent Christmas Sermons, it'll go, society is demon-possessed. <laughs> and I'll say, I said it. It is a weird... Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But this is what I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me. God is getting ready to lock up a whole bunch of demon spirits that have been loosed. It's going to take them out of circulation. And there's going to be a season where the opposition is going to almost dissipate for us to release the glory of God in the earth. And you say, well, that can't happen. Peter declares it, that there were fallen angels who left their natural habitation 
or their sphere of authority where they were supposed to be. And I think it's referring to that they came to the earth and, and, and got with the women and, and created the giants. And the Bible says God hath reserved, he has bound them in chains took them out of circulation and they are reserved unto the judgment in darkness so they were loose and then the Lord said you have ticked me off you have crossed the line and you are out of here and I'm locking you up until judgment day so in the name of the Lord hallelujah we come against these demon spirits that have been unopposed that are ruling a monk, running a monk in our nation and other nations in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, by the authority that has been given to you and me. This is what the Bible says. Every knee shall bow. Philippians and Romans 14 both declare, every knee shall bow. Not maybe, not if they feel prone to, not if they're forced to. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus, not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Confucius, not Mary Baker Eddy, not Joseph Smith, hallelujah, not the Monterey, hallelujah, but Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost, they're coming into a season where God is going to cast out demons and then he's going to make this foul demonic realm get to its knee and say, I finally have to confess. I don't want to, but Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. You need to get riled up in your spirit and quit tolerating what the enemy is doing to you. Uh, listen to me. If you are in a place in your life right now where there is chaos, unrest, confusion going on in your life, <clears throat> disturbing your sleep, making you angry, causing you to act out of character, you are dealing with with a demonic attack. Ambien's not going to fix it. Counseling is not going to fix it. Hallelujah. You need to recognize that there is an all-out, concentrated attack against me because the enemy recognizes that there is a mandate on my life that if I can stay where I should be with the Lord and I can survive this thing in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, I lose this authority. Brother, in Waco right now, in the name of the Lord, on you and your wife and on your church, in the name of Jesus, may there be such a spirit of boldness. Come here, you and your wife, I, I, let me lay hands on you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. These are pastors from Waco, Texas. And in the name of the Lord, and in the name of Jesus, there are those even of old age that have looked and said, but you're young and you don't know what you're doing. I sense a pressure that's tried to make you acquiesce to a certain form or certain style. But in the name of the Lord, if you will hold your ground, saith God, there's a Davidic anointing upon you and I'm going to begin to add a whole new dimension to you in the name of the Lord now I see a breakthrough by the spirit of the Lord hallelujah that there's going to be a supernatural growth that the enemy said shut the doors give it up throw in the towel but know this saith the Lord that's not going to happen for your men and women after my own heart so in the name of Jesus hallelujah I put a fire in your belly, a fire in the name of Jesus. Over the next 90 days, saith God, you're going to begin to see a miraculous release of the glory and of the power of God upon your life and upon your ministry because of your faithfulness and your hunger for me. Now I'm going to open heaven over you, saith the Lord, and I'm going to cause that which was not to be as though it already was. For my favor is upon you, saith God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, what I'm trying by the Holy Ghost to get in your spirit is you don't have to worry about, well, I don't have a, a, a degree in theology, and I don't know the Bible well, and, and I'm 62 years old, or I'm retired, or I'm single, or I'm divorced. I don't have any ability. It does, listen, authority has no reference to those things. It only has a reference if you are full of God, if you're seeking the Lord, if you will tell the Holy Spirit, I need you to be my helper and rise up in me. Uh, God said, I'll go before you and I'll fight your battles. Uh, I'm telling you, something's being broken uh, in the name of Jesus. Do you feel that? Hallelujah. There's a shifting in the spirit of the Lord. Uh, there you, you need to get angry in God uh, and declare, uh, if God be for me, nobody can be against me. As I end, Jesus just looked at that man that had thousands of demons. This man was in such bad shape that they could not bind him with chains. See, the problem is we're trying to deal with the demonic with natural restraints. Yeah, that's right. This is why um, there's so much medicine being di dispensed yeah, right. in America. If psychologists and hospitals did not have medicine, not, not in the natural realm, but for mental issues, if they did not have medicine to give a person, they would have a zero success rate. Because unless they can give them a drug that gets inside of their cerebral cortex, and all of that and begins to drug it down. See, those spirits don't leave. They just go to rest because they just won. I'm still there. And this person can't do nothing because they're just a zombie. Right. That's right. Jesus did not use natural means for that man. The world had tried to. They tried to restrain him with change. And the Bible said, when those spirits began to manifest, he would just snap them. But when he saw Jesus, he said, oh, I've met you before. <clears throat> and he said, please don't torment me. I'm here to declare today to hell that this church and this preacher is making a declaration in 2024 and the rest of this year, I am going to torment demons. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We are going to torment spirits. And when they came out of him, the most amazing part of this story is when the city sees What's done? They're really not moved. We are going to make demons cry. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How? Signs, wonders, and miracles with all that's gone on in the Bridgestone Arena. We're going to rent that place for at least one night, and we're going to fill it up. And this time, it won't be secular music or entertainment or comedy or a rodeo, but it's going to be the house of God manifesting the world. I'm trying to bring you up to another level Hallelujah. You've got to start thinking different. <clears throat> Some of you have been dealing with the same problem for 10, 15 years. That needs to stop. It needs to stop. It's nowhere in the Bible. 
is there scriptural basis for that other than the only one I can think of is Paul telling the Lord, will you allow this thorn in the flesh to depart from me? And he, Jesus said, don't ask me about that anymore. My grace is sufficient for you. And that was a special case. So in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm not going to call prayer partners today, but I, this is where I'm uh, As I keep talking to you, if you need, <clears throat> if you're ready for God to release an inundation of the Holy Ghost in you. It's what Lord said on me two days ago in prayer. As I'm talking to you right now, wherever you're at, get out in the balcony, get out of your seat, and as quick as you can, get up as close as you can to the front of this church. <clears throat> Don't you hear me? Other people can't do this for you. You have to do this. Hallelujah. God, will you open the eyes? Now, Lord, O oh God of glory and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you release upon this congregation a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of my understanding would be open hallelujah it's I, I can look at so many i can just see a dark cloud that's settled on many of you for for months and even years in the name of the lord i as your pastor and as your shepherd hallelujah i command every demon spirit in this building in the name of the lord you get up and leave this building in the name of jesus Hallelujah. Lord, we begin to release upon your servants in this altar right now that they came in one way with chains, but they're walking out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't. Hey, this just came up my spirit. So many times I pray for people and they just cry the whole time. It's just so bad. Stop that. That's not a sound of victory. As long as the devil can get you to cry and talk about how bad it is, you lose. You're going to have to shift out of that. You need the Lord to change your declaration. Just stop crying. Hallelujah. Stop letting the enemy make you moan and come into agreement with you. You need to ask God, Lord, lose some victory out of my spirit. Hallelujah. Lose a declaring, declarative word of the Lord that comes up out of me. Listen, the Lord said, if you'll bind him, I'll bind him. If you'll lose your life, I'll lose your life. Listen, as Jesus is, so are you not next week right now right now I'm looking at Jesus I'm looking at Jesus hallelujah when you look in the mirror you see Jesus as he is so are we just stay right here Burton leads us in song stand I lean not on my own understanding. Some of you are going through a metamorphosis right now. My life is in the hands. Ask of the Holy the Ghost to pray through you. Heaven. Building up ourselves I on our most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't my talk about what the devil has life. done to you. Begin to declare by faith what heaven. God is going to do for you. I what he's already done. Standing. 